again everybody, Ron Metris here again. A few days ago I started to reorganize my meteorite collection and I came to realize that I have quite a few meteorites that come from Australia. So I thought I would do another video kind of highlighting those, kind of a specialty video. Uh, show you what I have here. Um, so here we go. The first item I have to show here is an unoxidized end cut of Hakata. It's 32.2 grams. One of the larger pieces in private collections that is unoxidized. I've seen a 15 gram piece, a 16 gram piece, but nothing this large. Uh, this comes from the Northern Territories in Australia. It is a palisite. Uh, it's pretty well polished. You can see that it is unoxidized. Most of the other stuff you see in private collections is a, has been um, oxidized into hematite and magnetite. This is not. This is actually totally unoxidized. You can see some of the crystals coming through the outside. A nice little piece. Brought this from Blaine Reed in Denver a couple years ago. Now this piece has a little bit of a story behind it. I was at the Ventura County Fairgrounds a few years ago and there was a gem and mineral show. Most of it were just common rocks, but there was one person there who had two meteorite slices, on it, so I bought both of them. This is one of them. It's a called Cocklebitty. It's from the Nullarbor region of Australia, 102 grams. It's an H5 chondrite. Uh, the, the high contrast of the black background and the, the very shiny metal is just absolutely beautiful. It sort of reminds me of a Tacitat 004. It has kind of the same kind of characteristics. Just love this piece. So here we have a 187 gram piece of Mundrabilla. It's medium octahedrite and comes from the Nullarbor region of Australia. And these are kind of fun little pieces. A lot of people see animal shapes in these things. Uh, this one, to use your imagination, I kind of see a, a rabbit. The ears would be up here and the feet would be down there, sitting erect. So yeah, use your imagination, you can kind of see it in there. Uh, these are kind of twisted, you can see right right there, the twisting of the metal. Nice and stable, there's no rust issues with this thing. It's been sitting on my shelf for about six years with no issues whatsoever. So it's just a nice, nice little piece. A little regna lift in there, a little scoop. This is the flatter side, apparently it's been sitting on the ground, I guess. It's got a little ink label there where it former collector put the weight on it. Just a really interesting little piece. So shortly after I purchased that first piece, of course I stumbled on a larger piece. This is a 275 gram Mundrabella. What drew me to this one was this little bump right here. It reminds me of a stump left over after you cut a tree down has kind of that look to it. And I don't mind having multiples. I, I've got multiples of many things. But this is just a pretty piece. It's got nice uh, patina on it. The caliche is intact. Well, that's a little point on here too. But it's just a nice little example of Mudrabilla. Again, it's very stable. Haven't had any issues with rusting or flaking. It's just been sitting on myself for going on six years. Just a nice little piece. So for the grand finale on the Mundrabillas, I found this piece on eBay about a month after I saw that other one. So it came in at 623 grams. I thought, oh my God, nothing's huge. So I just got a habit, so I went ahead and bought it. Got all the usual caliche and uh, the same patina. Uh, it's got a lot of regular lifting in it. The feature I like the most on this one are those two cavities right there. They kind of look like two eyes staring back at you from the rock. It's kind of creepy come right down to it. They kind of follow you. So I decided to go ahead and purchase this one as the final piece of my Mundrabillas. I think I'm done with these now. I've got plenty of them, three of them. So uh, just a nice piece. It's stable. There's no issues with any rust, anything falling out. And it's got the usual scoop. So my favorite, another favorite piece is this big scoop right here. It just, and this one right here. 
it, I don't know, it's just something about it. Got a few other little cavities in there where some pieces have been eroded out, some probably some kind of uh, inclusion of some sort. But those eyes, oh my God. <laughs> So that's the grand finale of the Munger Bills. No more. This is a piece of box hole. It comes from the Northern Territory in Australia, around the Plenty River region. This is 185 grams. It's a medium octahedrite. I believe it's a 3AB classification. Nice and stable. It uh, doesn't rust or flake. It's been on my shelf for about five years and no issues has the original patina, just a nice little piece. Next on the hit parade is a nice chunk of Mount Dueling. This is a 409 gram piece, it's a coarse octahedrite. Comes from Western Australia in the North Yilgarn area, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Nice piece. It's stable. It's rather flat. So, I, somewhere I saw that most of these tend to be flat. This one is almost pancaked. But it's got a nice surface. There's not a whole lot of rust on it. There's a little bit of patina. It's just a nice, nice piece. Nice edge to this thing, too. Very sharply edged. It was amazing how sharp this was. How clean of an edge that is. This is a piece of Henberry. It comes from the Northern Territory in Australia. This is 124 grams. It's a medium octahedrite. Uh, it's got all their characteristic red patina that you would associate with a Henberry. It's pretty common to have that. Uh, it's clean. There's no rust issues at all. It seems that Australian iron meteorites tend not to rust. Every one that I have it gives me no issues. This is a nice piece. It's got a couple of little regma lips in it. There's one right there. And there's another one up here. I think there's one on the other side here. Yeah, right in here. So just overall, pretty nice little piece. For the final piece, it's so special it's going to make a dramatic entrance. Here it comes. This is a 226 gram piece of Henberry. It's highly sculpted and it's one of the most beautiful pieces I think I've ever seen in Henberry. It almost looks like a, a sculpted Sakota lean. It is just outstanding. It's got all the little uh, red patina that you would expect, but it's unusual in that it's, it's down inside the regma lips. I, I would assume that somebody's cleaned this and they just left the interior, all the surface has been handled so much I think it's just worn off. But look at all those cavities. There's no bad angle on this thing. Every angle is presentable. This is a very sharp little point right there. This is just a great piece. It's one of my favorites. <laughs>